Now I want to massage this further and see whether we can somehow squeeze out Ohm's law, which is the linear relation between the potential and the current. So let me start off with a wire which has a cross section A and it has a length L and I put a potential difference over the wire plus here and minus there, potential V. So I would get a current in this direction, that's our definition of current going from plus to minus. The electrons, of course, are moving in this direction with the drift velocity. And so the electric field in here, which is in this direction, that electric field is approximately V divided by L, potential difference divided by distance. In one second, these three electrons will move from left to right over a distance VD meters. So if I make any cross section through this wire anywhere, I can calculate how many electrons pass through that cross section in one second. In one second, the volume that passes through here, the volume is VD times A, but the number of free electrons per cubic meter is called N. So this is now the number of free electrons that passes per second through any cross section. And each electron has a charge E. And so this is the current that will flow. The current, of course, is in this direction, but that's a detail. If I now substitute the drift velocity, which we have here, I substitute that in there, so then I find that the current, I get a E squared, a charge squared, I get N, I get tau, I get downstairs the mass of the electron, and then I get A times the electric field E, because I have here this electric field E. When you look at this here, that really depends only on the properties of my substance for a given temperature. And we give that a name. We call this sigma, which is called conductivity. Conductivity. If I calculate for copper the conductivity at room temperature, that's very easy, because I've given you what N is, on the blackboard there, 10 to the 29, you know what tau is at room temperature, three times 10 to the minus 14. So for copper, at room temperature, you'll find about 10 to the eighth. You'll see more values for sigma later on during this course. This is in SI units. I can massage this a little further because E is V divided by L, and so I can write now that the current is that sigma times A times V divided by L. I can write it down a little bit differently. I can say V therefore equals L divided by sigma A times I. And now you're staring at Ohm's law, whether you like it or not, because this is what we call the resistance capital R. We often write down rho for one over sigma, and rho is called the resistivity. So either one will do, So you can also write down, you can write down V equals IR, and this R then is either L divided by sigma A or 
L times rho, let me make it a nicer rho, divided by A. That's the same thing. The unit for resistance R is volts per ampere, but we call that ohm. And so the unit for R is ohm. And so you want to know what the unit for rho and sigma is that follows immediately from the equations. The unit for rho is then ohm meters. So we have derived the resistance here in terms of the dimensions, namely the length and the cross section, but also in terms of the physics on an atomic scale, which all by itself is, is interesting. If you look at the resistance, you see it is proportional with the length of your wire through which you drive a current. Think of this as water trying to go through a pipe. If you make the pipe longer, the resistance goes up, so that's very intuitively pleasing. Notice that you have A downstairs, that means if the pipe is wider, larger cross-section, it's also easier for the current to flow. It's easier for the water to flow, so that's also quite pleasing. 